Hello there guys, it's uh, 11.55 and it's the 24th of January 2012 and I'm just doing a little practice with some weather imaging software that I've used in the past uh, and I thought I'd just uh, show you some of the software and some of the kit that you need to run it whilst I'm doing that. Okay, the software I'm going to be using is called WX2Image or WXTOIMG if you want to type it in and do a Google search on it. And it's a freeware edition that I'm actually using that's uh, loaded up now. Um, basically, we're going to use this software to download to the laptop here uh, via uh, a Yaesu uh, VX6. Uh, amateur transceiver uh, the, the sound files that the satellite is broadcasting as it comes overhead shortly uh, just after half past twelve and half an hour's time um, that uh, sound file goes through the audio cable connected onto the handset and into the microphone input at the back of the uh, laptop here and uh, the audio has already been set up on this laptop uh, which uh, basically is a matter of setting the volume so that the image is received without too much uh, over deviation of the uh, the audio uh, track that's coming into the laptop. Um, the only other piece of kit that really is uh, necessary, I've got an adapter here for a PL plug onto a coaxial cable and that's ultimately the antenna outside at the moment is uh, what's called a quadrophilia helix antenna and uh, that's a specific antenna that uh, is designed for horizon to horizon reception of overhead satellites as they pass overhead uh, so basically it's it's not uh, directional in so much as that um, you would imagine a beam antenna receiving a signal from a particular direction the aim of this antenna is to receive as much of the signal as possible as it passes from one horizon overhead to the next horizon. I'll show you that antenna shortly. Um, okay, so WX to it uh, to image is uh, downloadable for free over the internet. Um, there is an enhanced version uh, that's uh, paid for that you can download. I've not used that myself, but I do understand that it. Uh, has some benefits to it in the way that it processes the imagery uh, that you will uh, utilize but as, as it stands this is all the kit that you will need to set up a, a weather image receiving station um, I'll just pop outside and show you the quadrophilia helix as I say we've got to just short of half an hour now before the satellite passes over and um, I shan't uh, put you through the pain of waiting through the whole of that duration, but we'll just pop outside and see the antenna. Okay, hopefully you can you can hear me okay. This is the Quadrophilia Helix antenna. It's a, a home-brewed antenna from some plans that I found on the internet. Basically made out of 8mm copper. Um, central heating piping and the 90 degree unions and joined, joining the, uh, the coaxial cable to it using some uh, small jubilee clips in the centre of the uh, pole there to the elements at the top um, as you can see if I just zoom out a bit it's secured to uh, a fishing pole uh, which is strapped on with some awning straps to the back of the Land Rover uh, just enough height there to get it in the clear uh, up probably level with the uh, the eaves of the house at the moment um, so that's the antenna probably cost me about um, I'd say about 20 pounds for all of the uh, materials to buy that from uh, your local DIY so. okay so back in the house uh, just having a quick look through some of the uh, basic features that you'll need to understand to uh, work with weather satellites. Um, this was a, a steep learning curve for myself uh, from reading from the internet. Uh, 
uh, initially I started off with a free element beam that I've got uh, lying around in the garage and used that to uh, listen to a satellite when it came over uh, just to see if I could listen to the sound file. Uh, there wasn't any problem with that and that was, I think it was NOAA 15 um, that I was listening to on that occasion. Um, in fact let's just have a look on this website. There is uh, some of the satellites up there which unfortunately are no longer functioning correctly. Uh, that will be transmitting a signal um, but the, uh, the, the cameras are malfunction so you, you'll get an image uh, or a sound file but there's actually no image in that file and that particular satellite that I was uh, looking at on that occasion was NOAA 17 um, and uh, unfortunately uh, I was playing around with the software and thought I was doing something wrong and it turned out that it was the, the satellite that uh, that had let us down on that occasion. So this uh, this website is uh, one that I find useful. It's produced by a chap named Douglas S. Dean, uh, who has a call sign of Golf Mike 4, Victor Zulu Yankee. And his home, home page here, or his uh, satellite page, is regularly updated, telling you the status of the weather satellites. I don't know how well this uh, will come out uh, on the image, um, but the web address is uh, http colon uh, forward slash forward slash homepage dot ntl world dot com forward slash papa hotel kilo foxtrot hotel one uh, forward slash status dot htm and hopefully, if I can master the uh, the video software that come with uh, my Kodak PlaySport, I will uh, put you that web address at the bottom of the screen. But basically, this 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 web page gives you uh, updates on the current status of the various NOAA satellites, which are of interest to us um, in in respects of the weather images that we want to receive. Uh, again, I don't know how clearly this will come across on the camera, but as you can see there, we've got uh, notes there for uh, four of the NOAA satellites and two other satellites, Meteop A and Meteor MN1. Also shown there uh, alongside that is the, 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 the identifier for the satellite. So at the top, we've got NOAA 15. Uh, that's broadcasting on uh, frequency of one. 137.620 megahertz and you'll also see that uh, that's on and it's producing good images uh, on the last update and that the there is a footnote there footnote number eight so if you scroll down the page just take a quick look at that in case it's going to uh, tell us something of note and as of the 12th of october 2010 uh, to 3 p.m and the following APT frequencies were applied. So that, that's basically a change of the frequency um, that, uh, that that satellite uses. And that can happen on occasion, so you need to double check this page uh, just to see that you're listening to the right frequency when the satellite comes over, otherwise you will have a frustrating time of it. Um, okay, so that's that web page that we've looked at there. It is entirely separate to uh, the WX. FT, uh, sorry, WX2 image software. So if we're just going back onto the WX2 image software, um, and if we select from the main menus at the top, uh, file, and you will need an internet connection to do this when you first set up, but you need to uh, do something called updating the Keplers. The simplest way to think of this is as a buzz timetable for satellites, and that's what your Keplers are. So we've clicked on that and uh, we're getting a little message at the bottom of the screen telling us that new Keplers have been installed from Celestrack.com. So basically our satellite buzz timetables, they've been updated. And we go back up to file and we would click on satellite pass list. Now uh, further into the settings you can select the particular satellites that are of interest to you. I've already done that, and that's perhaps something I'll come on to on another video. Um, but if you if you click on Satellite Pass List, it'll give you a screen such as the one that I've got open here. And I've selected uh, four weeks' worth of predictions that have been brought up there for the particular satellites that I am interested in. Uh, NOAA 19, NOAA 18, 15 and 17. 
and it gives us the uh, direction it's traveling and they are all uh, in a northerly direction the maximum elevation that's uh, the height the uh, number of degrees of, of, above you that it will be at its maximum on its pass and the longitudinal path that that's passing more importantly probably is the time that uh, it's coming over and the next one we're interested in as i say is 1234 hours uh, which is in just short of uh, 28 minutes time and the duration that it's overhead for 13 point, uh, five, well 13 minutes and 5 seconds and also more of note the frequency just double check that frequency is correct with the website we just looked at so it's 137 decimal 1000 on that um, so if we go back to that it's NOAA 19 it is a, a good satellite to work with one of the more recent ones hence the uh, number being 19 as we can see going back to Douglas Dean's page here uh, there is a note number 6 on this and, the uh, and again the frequency is the same so we'll just set that frequency into the, the handset <coughs> he says hopefully you can see Michael Sam pop up at Mike Zero Lima Papa Delta and the radio is currently listening to GB3VT or has been so let's just see um, there we go So we want 137.100, 137.100, and that's okay. And the mode that you'll be using on the Yesu is WFM. So if we just select that mode, um, there's the type of wideband uh, FM reception that we want to be receiving ok so we're getting a bit of static there in the background uh, not to be uh, unexpected uh, so the frequency is now set um, it is going back to the software WX2 image bring that up ok this is all set up as I say you might need to just work through some of the help files um, in fact let me just turn that down in case it's interfering so we've gone back to WX2 image and we're pretty much set now just turn the radio down three notches uh, for my own reference really when I come back to uh, download the satellite signal uh, as I say on WX2 image you may need to uh, tweak around the settings when you first uh, start using it with your radio or your kit um, but we're, we're back on the main screen and we click on file and I've already set up the system previously to um, listen for this particular satellite that I've selected so hopefully it will start to automatically process the imagery when the satellite starts to pass ok I'll just check on those settings it is a while since I've used it so I'll just uh, come back to you in a moment <laughs> 